Uh, okay, so this is quite a difficult one actually. It may freak, uh, freak you out a little bit. Uh, compound E C4H7NO is one of two optical isomers. It can be oxidized by Tollens reagent. That's telling me, of course, it has an aldehyde group uh, to an alpha amino acid. Um, it forms two different polymers, G and H. Um, so the alpha amino acid F uh, forms two different polymers, okay. So, and those might perform the success structures for E and for F. Draw repeat units of polymer G and H and describe how F forms G and H. So this is quite tricky. Um, you know you've got an aldehyde group to begin with. So let's put that boy in there. He's got to be on the end because he's an um, aldehyde. Aldehydes always have to be on the end because I can't do anything now to get ketone. Um, I've then got four carbon atoms. Remember it is a um, alpha amino acid, which means I've got to start with that group there because they told me it forms an alpha amino acid only by oxidizing that to an um, Alpha, uh, sorry, an um, acid group. So I've got to start with that basic structure. I've just got to work out the R group coming off here. How many carbons have I used too far? Two, but I've got another two to do. I've used my N up um, there. I've used my O, so I can only play around with carbons and hydrogens now. How many have I got left over? Well, I've actually got three hydrogens left over, which means I have that. Let's do a quick check. Um, so uh, I'm going to have four carbons, one, two, three, four. I've got seven hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one O, one N, all sorted. Okay, so we sorted out that one. All's well with the world. Um, that is my first one. The, obviously the next one to get to my amino acid is quite easy because I'm just changing that into a carboxylic acid. So I take my basic structure to be the same, uh, CH double bond, CH2, and then that just be, gets oxidized to a carboxylic acid like so. So that there is my alpha amino acid F. This guy, of course, is E. I now need to do my polymers. Well, hopefully you can see that I can form two different polymers. One will be a condensation polymer because I've got an amine group there and uh, acid there. So that can form a condensation polymer. The other one is because I've got a carbon-carbon double bond there, I can make um, a, uh, an addition polymer as well. So let's do that. So let's do first of all the condensation polymer. Well, I'm just going to um, link those two up. So NH there, CH like so. This becomes the same CH double bond CH2, because I've not touched that at all. C double bond, and then that goes like so. So that will be my condensation polymer, that will be the repeat unit uh, going off there. For my addition polymer, I'm going to draw this in a slightly different way. Uh, so I'm going to draw it, but I'm going to focus it around that carbon there. Um, and that's that H there. And then this group here is going to be uh, CH and then coming off here will be NH2, and then going off there will be my acid. So I've just changed it around, just pop that there, so it makes it a bit easier. Um, so try and draw it as an H shape, and then to get your addition polymer, that bond breaks because it goes that and that, and then that there is your um, addition polymer, like so. Um, so describe how F and G form, so um, for my addition polymer it's addition across the um, uh, double double bond and for condensation polymer 
is between a small molecule is eliminated, which in this case is water, um, to form a, a poly um, amide. Um, interestingly, after all of that, this is quite a straightforward one. Um, so they've now given us a uh, polymer and they want me to draw the structure of it. Uh, well, hopefully, because they've actually given you one repeat unit. So effectively, all you have to do is that becomes the OH group there and that becomes the group there. So after all the hard work that you've just done for the previous question, that is relatively straightforward. Okay, now this one is uh, much harder. So uh, a student tried to prepare that polymer, but didn't actually get it. Mm -mm, what happened? So um, the mass uh, isolated two major uh, compounds. The mass spectra is shown below. One is one two nine, and one is two five eight. So um, obviously the one with um, if you add all of this up, that comes to the uh, molar mass of being 147. So if I've got it to be 129, it must have done something to uh, form some sort of cyclic compound or something like that, because it's actually lost mass. So what could happen? Well, hopefully you can see, um, da, 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 da. if I go for this, I've got a amine group there, and I've got a carboxylic acid group there. So what it could actually do is uh, go round on itself to form a cyclic system. So that and that could actually polymer, well not polymerize, but actually form a cyclic system like so. Um, so this is quite tricky to draw. Um, that's going to, so that would be eliminated along with one of the H's. So I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five uh, membered ring. So one, two, three, four, five. That's my H like so. Um, I tell you what, that would therefore be, if I go around and do that, so that's that end there, and that will be NH, like so. This carbon here is C sil double bond O. This is CH2 for that one. That is CH2 for that one. And then this one has got an H on it, and it's got a carboxylic acid group on it like so and then I'm on to that. Right, for the next one I've tried to draw two of these out but flip them. So I focused on this group here. So I've got CH and H2 COOH. So I've got a carboxylic acid and I've got an amine group. So they could obviously form poly uh, they could form amide links. Uh, so, I've drawn one pretty much as it is there, but I've just displayed out the carboxylic acid group and I flipped one over. So, effectively, what's going to happen is uh, that will go and that will go. So, this is going to look really odd, but hopefully, you'll see what's going on. So, that will form an NH group there with the N that was there. And then equally, the N that was there will form the group like so. So they're really long bonds, but it gets the point across. Uh, right, so more on polymers now. Um, Polymer J recently developed, repeat unit shown below. What are my functional groups in Polymer J? Okay, well, let's have a look. Um, uh, it looks like we are going to have, this is going to be an amide group, isn't it? And then this guy here, you've got C double bond O here and C O there, so that's your ester link. So you've got an amide and an ester for that. Uh, two different monomers uh, react to form polymer J. Display, um, draw the structures displaying the functional groups. So, You've got your amide group there, um, and then you're going to have your um, ester groups there. So you need to figure out how we can get um, 
your ester groups and also your amide groups there. So let's split this boy up there. So I've got C double bond O, CH2, and I've got four of them, and then C double bond O. For this one, I'm going to have NH. C, CH3, 2, CH2, O. So, how can I complete that? Well, that is going to be my dicarboxylic acid. And then this guy here is going to form my A mean group. And the other one is my alcohol group, like so. It goes on after that to say polymer J is used in hairspray, can easily be washed by hot water. Why is it easily washed by hot washed away by hot water? Well, as you know, that both amide and ester groups can be hydrolyzed um, by water. So that's why both those groups can be hydrolyzed, so that would break the polymer down.